Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro. As you can see, this box is absolutely tiny. I did kind of take a sneak peek because I was very curious how a charger that can charge what this is capable of charging can fit in this box. But I'm gonna quit talking. I'm gonna show you what's inside and that's coming up next. Here we go, guys. This is what it looks like outside of the box. As you can see, this thing is not big at all we've got the power cord and we've got this lipo bag that i bought separately very nice it is i've got another one actually that i'd gotten in the past that i'd forgotten about uh, but i've been using that a lot lately in lieu of of waiting for me to unbox this thing one thing that i do want to say is that it only comes with the power cord it does have some other stuff going on that i'm going to show you coming up next all right, guys, let's do a quick little 360 tour of this thing. We've got a micro USB, regular USB. Back here, we've got our power inputs. We've got our AC in here, DC in here, so you can do field charging, things like that. We got nothing right there. The bottom, just kind of uh, heat release and basic stuff there. If you look at the top, this is what separates this from a lot of other chargers and every other charger I have. You can do wireless charging right here for your smartphone or whatever other devices come out that are currently out that I may not be aware of or will come out in the future. I think that's where a lot of charging is headed at some point. So this is pretty cool that this is built into this charger. This will do one through six S power, which is cool. Here is a look. You don't have those little balance boards with this. What you do have is you can plug in your little charger, your little JST plug, and then you can plug in your XT60s right there. And if you don't have XT60s for your batteries, you can always get a little adapter for your Deans or whatever. That is not a big issue, at least not to me. We've got this channel button and this button here. I'm not sure exactly what that all does yet, but we will find out coming up next. So I wanted to unpackage this before we do any of that stuff. I was doing a little bit of practice off camera with the new charger and the interface is actually pretty dang cool. I think you guys will like it. Let's look at this. We're gonna use this during the unboxing or rather the demo portion. So let's just take a look. Got a nice zipper here, it looks like. Yep. Nice zipper to keep things nice and secure. There we go. Lots of room inside. All right, coming up next, we are gonna do a demo with a new charger. Okay, so what we've been waiting for is coming up right now. I'm gonna plug this thing in. This is definitely a computer. This is by far and away the most high-tech charger I've ever used and seen in person. It's got our channel button right here. Got two channels so you can toggle between the two. Let's do our charge on the first channel. And the battery that I'm wanting to use is my 4S Scorpion Competition Pack. I have flown this on a few things off camera and I really like it. Hopefully I'll get a chance to show you guys some of that footage coming up soon. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just gonna use it to charge this right here. Now, let's click right here. This, will sh this is basically our menu. I already set it to 4S, but if we hit that, it opens up this menu right here, put it back to 4S and Let's reset that. I like to charge at 1C. Now, this kind of automatically recognizes stuff. I really don't want to be dependent on that, at least not for this first time, and I really like this battery. So we will find that out later on. Talk to me in the comments. I will definitely do a lot more experimenting as time goes on, but I wanted to do a quick demo for this. Can check here these are the different battery types that it does very cool it's nice to have the flexibility that we've got right here and we can do charge discharge 
uh, discharge externally. That's a little more complicated than what we're going to talk about in this video. Of course, storage charge and my favorite balance. So I'm going to plug this thing in. Boom. And boom. And let's go down here. Start task. And we're charging. All right, I am going to turn this off and then we're gonna come back here periodically. I'm gonna put this battery in the LiPo charging bag because I do like to be safe when I'm charging my batteries. And we're gonna come back shortly. This charger is actually kind of funny. It's got a few little quirks that I think I'm gonna take some uh, getting used to. What it does is it does the balancing's done. I get levels things off and then it gives it you see that amperage running up there. So it is definitely dynamic. It is, it may even be better than my other chargers for charging the batteries. That is pretty cool. And I'm not sure why it just switched to the second channel when it showed that one. But you know what? Let's plug something else in and see what happens. All right, guys, I am wanting to show you both channels in action at the same time. I've got another Scorpion pack. This is a 75C 1800 milliamp hour pack. Now, I have to say that I love this pack. I have a few of these, and they are fantastic. I actually featured this pack in one of my Lippish P15 videos not that long ago. It was a bunch of smoke, uh, so it added kind of a cool atmosphere, but... I hope to do another video soon on a nice, clear, bright day. Kind of balance that out a little bit. As you can see, this is on channel two and it is 11.5 volts. It recognizes that, very cool. And one thing with this side, you wanna make sure to put your balance port on this side. All the way to the side, make sure you look at the numbers. So you can plug that in. Boom, got that plugged in. Now, push that button to toggle. I already have this preset for 1.18 amps, and I like to balance my batteries. I like to make my batteries last as long as possible, and it's telling me the cell voltage, cool. All right, so then we go down here, start task, and it is doing its thing, just like we're doing with the other battery. Now this is showing both channels charging at the same time, which is pretty darn cool, guys. All right, I'm gonna let this go for a bit and then we're gonna come back. As I've been using this, I have noticed a couple things. One, this battery's nice and cool as it's being charged, which is good, that's how it should be. It should not be getting hot. Uh, that could usually be an indication of an issue, uh, depending on how fast you're charging it. If you're charging at 1C, there should be no heat at all. And this itself is still pretty darn cool, even though we're sitting on a, a warm surface here, warm bed. Also wanted to point out that we've got a lot of feedback here. I'm not entirely sure what all of it means. I'm not sure what the W, I'm sure that stands for Watts, but I'm not sure what any of the numbers actually represent within that because we're getting a positive and a negative depending on how things are going as the cells are being balanced, all that stuff. And right here, I'm pretty sure that's our cell voltage, the range between the packs. So they're definitely pretty close together, which is good. That's an indication of a healthy battery and healthy charging situation. So we're just gonna let this go a little bit more and pop back in and see how things play out. All right, guys, this thing charged up really fast, as well as the other 3S packs, so I threw a couple more on there. And I am definitely liking how this works. Now, when you've got it just on this, I'm noticing we've got a percentage of the battery charged. We've got a, a much better breakdown of the voltage for each cell. That's cool. And of course, we've got the time elapsed and we've got how many a milliamp hour of energy we're putting right back in there, the voltage, all that stuff. 
and it switches on its own to both when we've got two things going on. So we've got the one channel and we've got the second channel and things are looking good. So far so good. When I come back after these are all charged up, I'll have my review notes wrap up and we'll discuss some stuff. All right, guys, we're gonna do a little review notes wrap up here. We have this battery just about done. It's going through the final motions on this 4S battery. So we're gonna start with the pros. The pros are the interface is really easy to use. I didn't have to look at the manual to figure out how to use the interface. That's how easy it is to use. Comes with a built-in power supply. No need for an external power supply, even though this thing is tiny. That is awesome. It's got a lot of power, especially for its size, guys. 200 watts on AC, 650 watts on DC. That's got a lot of power. And it also has the ability to wirelessly charge things. Now, I don't have anything that I can use as a demo for that, but just the fact that if I do get like a new iPhone or new Droid, whatever, I can utilize that, that is awesome. It's also got lots of feedback on the display as I showed you and you can easily charge two batteries at the same time and of course I showed you that too and obviously it's got a very small footprint that is terrific no matter how much space you have it's always nice to have something that doesn't take up much space but still does the job and does it well and this for me so far definitely gets the job done well. I've already got a few batteries charged from this thing and I haven't even been working on this video for that long, so that is awesome. As far as the cons go, I wish that it came with banana plugs. Now, I will say that most of the stuff I've been flying lately has taken XT60s, which, boom, work great with this. But for my other stuff, this is not gonna work as well without adapters, so if you do get this and do use other plugs like Dean's and the EC3s, you're gonna need to get some adapters. You can make them. There's definitely ways around it, so it's not the end of the world. However, I kinda like the banana plugs better than this design, so it kinda comes down to personal preference and how you're gonna use it. And the other thing is that it doesn't come with a DC plug with alligator clips for field charging. And of course that can easily be remedied too. In fact, I got, when I got this charger, I also got some alligator clips as well as some of these adapters. That way I can plug it in and use it in the field. So there you go. Like, comment, and subscribe at GB Linden out.